Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Ideal Diode Bridge and Answer to Riddle. This is a follow-up on a riddle that I have posted earlier regarding an ideal diode bridge which is described in this article in this website. I'm going to put this link on the page of the YouTube channel that you are now watching. There is a disclaimer here. The devices shown in this presentation are for educational purposes only. No endorsement or recommendation is implied and also other companies offer similar devices. And further, I'm not affiliated with Texas Instrument, which is the manufacturer of the devices that I'm showing in this presentation. So let me recap uh, the riddle itself. It is related to a bridge, a diode bridge, which can be used to rectify an AC signal or another application, which is kind of nice, in a case that you have uh, a problem ensuring that the input of a DC will be in the right polarity. You are afraid of reverse polarity connection, say, of a battery. You can put a diode bridge, and this will ensure that the system that you have will always see the positive in the right terminal. So here you can flip the DC at the input. So this is one application. The most uh, application are, of course, rectification. You can reduce the participation of the system which is due to the voltage drop on the diode. There is a voltage drop and therefore there is a power dissipation as the current is flowing through. By replacing, or I should say putting in parallel to the diode MOSFETs, which are turned on at the right time, that is when the diode are supposed to conduct. Now these usually will be part of the MOSFET itself, like this will be the body diode. Another way of doing it in order to avoid problem of uh, damage to the gate due to high voltage because the voltage is fed directly to the gates in, in say in this application. In order to avoid that you can put a zener diode to clamp the voltage to a safe, safe level that is the voltage between gate and so on. So this will protect the circuit against a high voltage at the input so that the gates will always see the range of voltage which is safe. Yet another way of doing it is to use a IC, a commercial I3, commercial unit, and I'm showing here the LM74670 by Texas Instrument. And this is a, actually a driver to the gate which senses the voltage across the transistor. And once the diode starts to conduct, then it will turn on the transistor in parallel and then when the voltage reverses and it detects a small voltage at the back, backward, it will turn it off. So this is a self-contained unit which will operate the MOSFET in parallel to the diode. In this case it's the body diode which you are utilizing as the main diode of the system. So the questions of the riddle were as follows to point to at least three deficiency of the self-driven topology. And then what is the Achilles heel of the active solution? Before giving the answer to this question, I'm going to explain the circuit, how it works, the problems that we have, and then we'll be ready to answer the questions. So let's start off with the basic configuration of four transistors. As you can see, there are two n types, two p-types, and the gates are connected in such a way that uh, the transistor will be turned on when the diode is conducting, okay, when the current goes this way. So let's have a look at the sequence. The voltage goes up from zero, say positive, here negative. And at the beginning, the diodes are conducting because as you notice, this is like a regular uh, bridge diode bridge by itself. Without the transistor, it's a diode bridge. So the diodes are starting to conduct. Voltage, meanwhile, is going up. And once it's hitting the threshold of the transistors, the gate to source voltage that will cause conduction a bit higher than that, then, of course, the transistors are conducting, reducing the voltage drop, since we have now RDS on, which could be fairly low. And in fact, uh, it's going to be a small jump because there was a loss of voltage on the diode and now 
uh, we have a little bit higher voltage and then it'll go all the way well, with a positive and once we hit again on the way down the threshold then again the diode will be contacting and on the negative cycle of course it's going to be the same. So this is the basic operation of this unit. There is a problem already, we can see it here, if the transition is very fast and if the forward like here current is on and it goes negative and then this starts conducting and if they turn on and off are, are not extremely fast then there might be an overlap here between the on here on this direction and on here on this direction so it's going to be a shoot through. So this is one of the problems and we can see that uh, therefore probably we are limited to low frequencies because if the frequency is very high we're going to have quite a bit of losses if the drive is like that. Now in this case this is even worse because uh, we are putting a resistor uh, for the clamp so we are slowing down both the turn on and turn off and therefore the shoot through is more likely and therefore this circuit will in fact be more suitable to even a lower frequency. So these circuits are good for DC and also AC at a low frequency. DC I mean protection against uh, a polarity reversal at the input. But there is a much bigger problem when you connect the capacitor and the output. And this is something you like to do in many applications, with the capacitive filter so-called, in which uh, you sort of uh, charge the capacitor to uh, close to the peak voltage. In this case, as long as you are within the diode region, everything works as it should be. But once you pass the threshold as the input goes up, the transistors, the corresponding transistors are turned on, so you are actually connecting the capacitor. So it will be charging with very high current, and then, in fact, discharging, because you are still connected, as long as the input voltage is above the threshold, you are still connected to the input. So the, you don't have this uh, diode effect anymore. It's just a direct connection between input and output. So this does not function as you'd like it to be. So this is a point that you have to take into account that this circuit is suitable for resistive loads or as I've said for the case of DC, polarity change, things like that, but definitely not with the large capacitor at the output. Now what about the solution with these uh, controllers? So these controllers, in order to operate properly, they have to detect the voltage across the dial as soon as the voltage is in the range of forward conduction, the gate should be turned on. And as soon as the voltage becomes a little bit negative, it needs immediately to turn off the gate very quickly. Otherwise, there'll be reverse current. So these units have to be fast. Commercial units at present for this application are limited to about uh, 600 hertz sinusoidal of course if um, it'll be a square wave we have a big problem here because the transition would be very fast and it may be not fast enough to turn off the gates now the unit itself looks like that what we have is actually sensing of the voltage across the transistor there is a charge pump to drive the gate and there is a um, capacitor here for storage because this unit does not have a power supply except from the voltage across the transistor. Now there is a voltage on the transistor when the transistor is non-conducting. When it is conducting it's very low. So only when the voltage is reversed you have a voltage here then you can actually have a power to the unit which is charging the capacitor. This is a relatively large capacitor and then during the other part of the cycle it'll provide the charge required for operation. So this circuit is not suitable for static operation like for the battery that I've said the polarity protection because uh, as long as this is on uh, there's no power here if the capacitor is discharged and there is no gate drive. 
So this circuit is suitable for AC alternating current only. Looking at the data sheet, we see that it'll turn on the transistor when the voltage is in the range of 0.5 volt. It will turn it off with a current of about 160 milliamp, which is nice, but not very fast. And indeed for a four nanofarad capacitance of the gate, we have a delay of 2.2 microsecond up to five microsecond. Notice that the detection level is to minus 20 millivolt, which is very nice. Now looking here at the traces they provide, we see that um, here is the voltage across the transistor. They have reversed it to minus 20 millivolt. The gate is on, there is a delay, and then the gate goes off quickly. So this is the delay until the unit turns off. During this time, there could be a reverse current. The operation of these units was tested, and there is a report provided by Texas Instrument. This is the number of this report, which shows uh, the results of the testing. Here is the demo board that was tested. We have here two capacitors of 4.7 microfarad at the output. Notice, however, that it seemed that originally they had a thousand microfarad at the output, which they have crossed out. That I didn't do that. This is in the original schematics. So obviously what happened is that they thought that they can put a thousand microfarad capacitor and then they discovered that this will not work with the capacitive load. So they've taken it out. Now these capacitors, although they are 4.7 microfarad, for the frequencies that are being tested, they are still not functioning as a storage capacitor. So it is not like having a very large capacitor at the output. So all the tests were done without this 1000 microfarad output capacitor, which cannot be put in for the reason that I've explained. The testing was done for various conditions. I'm showing here the 10 amp load test, and they are stressing that there is no output capacitor. Okay, I don't know whether they mean that there is no output capacitor of the 1000 microfarad, or also they haven't taken out these two. Uh, it's not clear. In any event, what we are seeing here is the ASD. I'm just giving the 300 hertz uh, result. There are lower frequencies too. This is the highest frequency. 300 hertz. Here's the gate. Once the input voltage is crossing the zero, then the gate starts to go up. And then as it goes minus the input, it shuts off as should be. And here we see the output. Obviously, there is no output capacitor here. Uh, there is a jump here, which I guess is uh, perhaps uh, due when the diode is conducting or not. I'm not so sure about that. And then there is some phenomena here, which I don't understand also. Uh, it's a flat portion here at the output. Uh, it's kind of strange. So this is the operation at 300 hertz. At 60 hertz, of course, it's uh, much, much better. And as I've said, this unit is really meant for low frequency operation. I should stress that this unit here for the bridge is different from another unit that the same company is actually manufacturing. And this is the LM5050. This is a static, uh, for static operation. This is ideal diode now. And it is intended for application like if you have a power supply that you like to put in parallel in an OR configuration. So suppose you have a one power supply with a certain voltage output, and then you put another one, uh, you insert into the cradle another one with a higher voltage. So what will happen that this will start conducting and this will shut off. So this is a different story. This is for a static operation. This unit has a much faster response. I'm not going into it. This is not the subject matter of this uh, presentation. So now we can go back uh, to the questions of the riddle. The first one was point at least three deficiency of the self-driven topology. So first is the possible shoot-through 
with fast rising, or they should be waveforms. Diode conduction till we reach the threshold, so we have at the beginning the diode conduction and dissipation. There is a problem with large output capacitor. You cannot operate this with a large output capacitor, and therefore the, uh, the result of the upper, the two first one is that the, there is a limited uh, frequency range that you can use this uh, configuration. As for the controller, what is the Achilles heel of the active solution? I mean the one with the controller. The crucial parameter is the turn off time. The faster it'll be, the better, of course, will be the operation. Of course, uh, one has to be extremely careful about uh, noise, spikes, it turns on that might turn the thing on and off, but this is not the issue I'm discussing here. And as we have seen, this is not suitable for battery reversal reverse polarity protection because it will not operate properly with a DC under DC condition. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. I thank you very much.